Hello, I am Julek and I am handling this machine. This is a scanning electron microscope. Today I like to cover two parts. Uh, first is sample preparation and the second is uh, an, uh, imaging using this machine and I am using uh, hair samples. So first part is uh, sample preparation. Uh, this is a sputtering unit. So first we have to switch on the vacuum pump. Start the pump. And the purpose of uh, this sputtering is that we are coating gold palladium alloy. Normally, we are, the hair is a non-conducting samples and uh, for some analysis, the sample must be conducting. So, that solely that electron could be grounded. If electron is grounded, if electron is grounded, then only we will get the secondary electrons for surface morphology. Uh, for this, uh, the voltage should be around 10 milliamps. Okay, let it start and I will go for this session. I have already coated some samples. First, I need to adjust the walking distance. And now I have to do sample selection. I have taken two slots, sample number one and sample number two. So I am selecting slot number one. This is a hair, so we are going to focus it. If uh, you can see this bright areas, this has arise due to the coating is not, so if the coating is not sufficient, it will appear like this. See, uh, that is known as a charging effect. So, uh, for that, avoiding that purpose, I am purposely done this because you want to see the mistake, how it happens. Uh, then we will again focus this. This is a grey hair. Yeah, I will do, I'll show you. This is grey hair and I will go for dark hair.
uh, we just first, uh, first we just magnify the image and focus step by step. When focus normal focusing fails, uh, we go for stigmation. That's how we uh, take the image. Scale. Scale, 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 scale. It will yeah. be up to one micrometer or nanometer scale. Nanometer we cannot do. We oh. can for nanometers we can we should use a FISA. This is not for nanometers. Fifty thousand X up to fifty thousand X it is good. For a one lakh and all we should go for a FISA field emission. And this uh, the working principle is uh, very much different. Field emission is different and this is we use electron source, what we use is uh, tungsten filament. There it is different. This is how uh, grey hair look uh, looks like. Uh, maybe some of you are from uh, I mean zoology, so you might have a better idea on, about this. Anyone from zoology? <laughs> hair sample. So what might be these things? This is a grey hair, and we are saving the image now. Anybody uh, knows uh, about this? Could you please come forward to explain what is this? Previously done some hair samples, I will show you. I have seen this kind of thing, I don't know what is it. Ah, this is hair. Around uh, three. Not grey hair, it's normal hair. What is that spot? That white spot. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I, I am not in front. You know only how to operate this. Yeah. You know the structure of your hair. Please explain yeah. to us. Yes. <laughs> you know? Please. You please know sir. the structure. No. <laughs> If it is internet, you can just open up. No, it is not. Machine is not connected to net. So virus problem. So sputtering, that one, na. Sputtering, that one, na. Remember, our E, our voltage, na, just 10 milliamps voltage, na. Engil matra coating correct, effective, that one, na, kathol. Check here, na. 10 milli volt, 10 milliamp. Then we process start here. E glow, that one. ये ग्लोइ लोडे प्लास्मा क्रिएट ही है ना बाय प्लास्मा ही लोडे अंदर डब सरफेस ना तो गोल्ड पैलेडी में लोई कोट आउ मैं नम्बर इलेक्ट्रॉन सोर्स इलेक्ट्रॉन सोर्स से सैंपल वीडियम सैंपल वीडियम पर देखे सैंपल तो ग्राउंड ही है ना ग्राउंड चेंज आंगने वेरे में माता में जाते लो सेकेंडरी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स Pon selalu ada vacuum melalui neutralize saya pon orang tidak. Apo, adine surface ini elektron akumulat agumbo, adu 
ഇങ്ങനെ ബ്രൈറ്റായിട്ട് ഇങ്ങനെ തിളങ്ങും നേരത്തെ ഞാൻ ജസ്റ്റ് അതിനെ കാണിച്ചില്ല തിളങ്ങിയിരിക്കുമ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് ആ ഡീറ്റെയിൽസ് കിട്ടത്തില്ല അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ ഈ സ്വെറ്റർ കോട്ടിങ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് മെറ്റാലിക് സാമ്പിൾസ് കണ്ടക്റ്റിംഗ് ആയതുകൊണ്ട് ആവശ്യമില്ല പിന്നെ ഈ ഒരു അറ്റാച്ച്മെൻ്റ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞത് ഇത് നമ്മൾ ഇതിനകത്ത് സെയിം ഇഡാക്സ് ഉണ്ട് ഇഡാക്സിലൂടെ തന്നെ അതിനകത്തുള്ള മെറ്റൽസിൻ്റെ കോൺസെൻട്രേഷൻ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അത് എങ്ങനെ ഡിസ്ട്രിബ്യൂട്ട് ചെയ്തേക്കുന്നു അതിൻ്റെ മാപ്പിംഗ് ഒക്കെ നമുക്ക് അറിയാൻ പറ്റും ഇത് കൂടുതൽ ജിയോളജിക്കൽ ആപ്ലിക്കേഷന് വേണ്ടിയാണ് ഈ അറ്റാച്ച്മെൻറ്റ് നമ്മൾ യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അപ്പം ഇതിനകത്ത് നമ്മൾ ചെയ്യുന്നതെന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ കാർബൺ ഒരു കാർബൺ ഫൈബറാണ് ഒരു കാർബൺ ഫൈബർ ഈ കാർബൺ ഫൈബർ കാർബൺ സബ്ലൈം സബ്ലൈം ചെയ്ത് അതായത് വേപ്പറായിട്ട് അതിൻ്റെ സർഫസിൽ കോട്ട് ചെയ്യും കാർബൺ കോട്ട് ചെയ്യുമ്പോഴും അത് ഗ്രൗണ്ട് ചെയ്യും അതിന് വേണ്ടിയാണ് അതിത് എന്തുകൊണ്ട് ഈ അലോ യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നില്ലെന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ നമ്മൾ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ അത് പലേഡിയമോ ഗോൾഡോ അങ്ങനെ എന്തെങ്കിലും അനാലിസ് ചെയ്യുവാണെങ്കിൽ ഓൾറെഡി നമ്മൾ ചെയ്യുന്ന ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റ് ഉള്ള സാധനം കോട്ട് ചെയ്ത് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ കറക്റ്റ് കോൺസെൻട്രേഷൻ കിട്ടത്തില്ല അതിന് വേണ്ടിയാണ് നമ്മൾ ഇത് യൂസ് ചെയ്ത് കൂടുതൽ ജിയോളജിക്കൽ പർപ്പസിന് വേണ്ടിയാണ് യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഇത് ഏകദേശം വൺ ആൻഡ് നൂറ്റി അഞ്ച് സെക്കൻഡാണ് നമ്മുടെ ഈ ഒരു സാമ്പിൾ ചെയ്യാൻ വേണ്ടിയുള്ള പ്രോട്ടോകോളിനകത്ത് പറയുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ നൂറ്റഞ്ച് സെക്കൻഡ് വരെ ഇതിങ്ങനെ കോട്ടിങ് ചെയ്യാൻ ഓട്ടോമാറ്റിക്കലി കട്ട് ഓഫ് ആവും ഇതാണ് സ്പെട്ടറിങ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ിംഗ് സാമ്പിൾസിനെ കണ്ടക്ടിംഗ് ആക്കാൻ വേണ്ടിയാണ് സ്പെട്ടറിംഗ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് നമ്മൾ ഇത്ര സെക്കൻഡ് നമ്മൾ സെറ്റ് ചെയ്തേക്കുവാണ് ആ സാമ്പിളിന് അനുസരിച്ചാണ് നമ്മൾ എത്ര സാമ്പിൾ ഇതിന്റെ സർഫസിൽ ഇരിപ്പുണ്ട് അതെ സെമ്മ വളരെ മൈനൂട്ട് സാമ്പിൾസ് ഇല്ല അതുകൊണ്ട് അങ്ങനെ ഇത് ഇതിനകത്ത് ഇത് വെറുതെ വെക്കത്തില്ല ഇതിൻ്റെ പുറത്ത് നമ്മളൊരു കാർബൺ സ്ട്രിപ്പ് വെക്കും കാർബൺ സ്ട്രിപ്പ് അത് ഗ്രൗണ്ട് ചെയ്യാൻ വേണ്ടിയാണ് കാർബൺ സ്ട്രിപ്പ് വെക്കുന്നത് കാർബൺ സ്ട്രിപ്പ് വെക്കും ബട്ട് അതിൻ്റെ എന്നിട്ട് ആ കാർബൺ സ്ട്രിപ്പിലോട്ട് ഇത് ഗ്രൗണ്ട് ചെയ്യണം അതിന് വേണ്ടി തന്നെ ചുറ്റും നമ്മൾ ഈ ഗോൾഡ് പലയുടെയും അല്ലെങ്കിൽ കോട്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് ദ സോൾസ് ആൻഡ് ദിസ് ചേമ്പറി സാവിങ് വെരി വേരിയബിൾ പ്രഷർ സോ ലൈക്ക് ദർ വിൽ ബി സം ദ പ്രസൻസ് ഓഫ് എയർ വിൽ ബി ദർ ഇൻ എ ലോവർ പ്രഷർ വാട്ട് ഹാപ്പൻസ് ഈസ് ദാറ്റ് Uh, there the electron uh, this uh, uh, what uh, the bleaching won't be there because nammal aa electron adinte parthu surface il veeyumbo adinte surface il grounding nu pagaram idinu air undallo air nathu thane namakku charged particles undu appo adu edukum appo adu kondu namakku adinte surface morphology edukkan pattum provided resolution korava irikkum adennu vacha nammal adinte surface athra thalai idin sputtering cheythu contaminate cheyan paadilla ennalla samples cheyan vendiyana നമ്മൾ യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് cubic mm or uh, cubic yeah to fill some yeah yeah, yeah. if it is tissue or something like that hmm angane anengile nammala sample cryo vaano cryo a formaldehyde le cheyum but adu adu kondirana aal researcher aanu theermanikkana like avarku engane aan interest ee formaldehyde add cheyda cheyidu verenu ullu appo nammal sectioning adakka avare sample prepare cheythu kondu nammal coat cheyum sample cheyala alla vera onnum ibada cheyunnilla അല്ല നമ്മൾ ഒരു പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ സാമ്പിൾ ചെയ്യുന്നപ്പോൾ ഓരോ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെൻറ് ഓരോ ടൈപ്പ് സാമ്പിൾസ് ആണ് വരുന്നത് ഓരോ സാമ്പിൾ ഓരോ നേച്ചറാണ് അത് നമുക്ക് എല്ലാവർക്കും വേണ്ടിയുള്ള ചെയ്യാനുള്ള ഫെസിലിറ്റി ഇല്ല ബട്ട് വെട്ടർ കൊണ്ടുവരുന്ന അവർ തന്നെ അത് പ്രിപ്പയർ ചെയ്യാണ്ട് കൊണ്ടുവന്നാൽ നമുക്ക് ചെയ്യാൻ എളുപ്പമായിരിക്കും അപ്പോൾ അവർക്കും മനസ്സിലാവും സാമ്പിൾ എന്തൊക്കെ പ്രോസസ്സ് ആണ് അവർ ചെയ്തിട്ടുള്ളതാണ് ലിക്വിഡ് ഇതിനകത്ത് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റത്തില്ല ലിക്വിഡ് ചെയ്യുന്ന സെമ്മ ഉണ്ട് പക്ഷേ ഇതിനകത്ത് ലിക്വിഡ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റത്തില്ല ഇത് ഒരു വാക്വം ചേമ്പർ ഈ ചേമ്പറിനകത്ത് ഒരു സ്റ്റേജ് ഉണ്ട് അതാണ് കാണിച്ചത് എന്താ ഒരു സ്റ്റേജ് സാമ്പിൾ ഹോൾഡറാണ് ഇതിനകത്ത് നമ്മളിത് വെച്ചിട്ട് സ്ക്രൂ ചെയ്തിട്ടാണ് വെച്ചിട്ട് വീണ്ടും വാക്വം അപ്ലൈ ചെയ്ത വാക്വം അത് ഡി ഡി ഗ്യാസ് ചെയ്ത് കളഞ്ഞിട്ട് ഐ മീൻ വാക്വം കളഞ്ഞതിന് ശേഷം നമ്മളിത് ഇത് ഇളക്കും ഇളക്കിയിട്ട് അതിനകത്ത് വെക്കും സാമ്പിൾ ഹോൾഡർ സാമ്പിൾ ഹോൾഡറിനകത്ത് ഇതുപോലെ എൻ്റെ സർഫസ് ഇങ്ങനെ ഇരിക്കും വൺ ടു ത്രീ നമ്പേഴ്സ് ഉണ്ടോ അപ്പോൾ ആ നമ്പറിൽ നമ്മൾ ഓരോന്ന് ഓരോ സാമ്പിൾ വെക്കും അപ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് എവിടെ വരുന്നുണ്ട് നമുക്ക് ഈ സ്റ്റേജ് ആവശ്യത്തിനനുസരിച്ച്
എട്ട് സാമ്പിൾ വെക്കാൻ പറ്റും ഒരേ സമയം എട്ട് മാറ്റി മാറ്റി നമുക്ക് സേവ് ചെയ്ത് സേവ് ചെയ്ത് സേവ് ചെയ്ത് പോകാൻ പറ്റും ഇമേജ് ആ കാർബൺ കോട്ടിങ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ് ലൈക്ക് നമ്മൾ ഈ ഗോൾഡ് ഗോൾഡ് ഈ ഈ ഇലീഡിയം അലോയാണ് യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ ആ അലോയ് ചിലപ്പം വരുന്ന സാമ്പിൾ ചെയ്യുന്നവർക്ക് ആ എലമെൻസ് ക്രൂഷ്യൽ ആയിരിക്കും അപ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ ആ എലമെൻറ്റ് തന്നെ കോട്ട് ചെയ്യുകയാണെങ്കിൽ അവരുടെ അനാലിസിസ് ചെയ്തിട്ട് കാര്യമില്ല അങ്ങനെയുള്ളവർക്കാണ് നമ്മൾ കാർബൺ അത് നമുക്ക് ഗ്രൗണ്ട് ചെയ്യുക കണ്ടക്റ്റീവ് ആക്കുക എന്നാണ് ഉദ്ദേശം അതിനുവേണ്ടി നമ്മൾ കാർബൺ കോട്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അതിവിടെ ഉണ്ട് കാർബൺ കോട്ട് ചെയ്ത് ആ ഒരു കാർബൺ സ്ട്രിപ്പ് വെച്ചിട്ട് അതിനെ ഹീറ്റ് ഐ മീൻ ഗ്ലോ ഗ്ലോ ചെയ്യും ഗ്ലോ ചെയ്ത് ഗ്ലോ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ലൈക്ക് ഒരു അത് വേപ്പറാവും വേപ്പറായിട്ട് അതിൻ്റെ സർഫസ് വന്ന് ഇരിക്കും അത് അത് നമുക്ക് ടൈം അഡ്ജസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യാം ഡിപ്പെൻഡിങ് അപ്പോൾ ജസ്റ്റ് ഓരോ സാമ്പിളിനും ഓരോ ടൈം അതിനനുസരിച്ച് നമ്മൾ സെറ്റ് ചെയ്ത് കൊടുക്കാം ബട്ട് അതൊരിക്കലും കണ്ടക്റ്റിങ് ആവാൻ പാടില്ല സൈസൊക്കെ ഇതിനകത്ത് അതുണ്ട് ഓപ്ഷൻസ് ഉണ്ട് മെഷർ നമുക്ക് ഇവിടെ നിന്ന് ഇവിടെ ലെങ്ത് മെഷർ ചെയ്യാൻ അതൊക്കെ ചില ഓപ്ഷൻസ് ഉണ്ട് ഇത് ഗ്രേ ഹെയർ അല്ല ഇത് നോർമൽ ഹെയർ ആണ് ഇത് അതിൻ്റെ റൂട്ടാണ് റൂട്ട് ദിസ് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് കാർബൺ സ്റ്റിക്കർ ഫോർ ഗ്രൗണ്ടിങ് This is the root. This is normal black hair. This is the root. ഡാമേജ് അല്ല നോർമലി ആരോഗ്യമുള്ള നമ്മുടെ ഹെൽത്തി ഹെയർ എന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ആ ഇപ്പം ഞാൻ നേരത്തെ കാണിച്ച സ്കെയിൽസ് പോലെ സാധനമല്ലേ അതിങ്ങനെ ചേർന്നിരിക്കും അൺഹെൽത്തി ഹെയർ എന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ അത് വിട്ട് വിട്ട് വിട്ടിരിക്കും പൊട്ടിപ്പോന്ന അങ്ങനെ ആയിരിക്കും അത് പല ഓരോരുത്തർ ഡിസ് അപ്പം ഇത് റിസർച്ച് ചെയ്യുന്നവർക്ക് കൂടുതൽ കുറച്ചുകൂടെ പറയാൻ പറ്റും
ദിസ് ഇസ് ദ റൂട്ട് ഇത് റൂട്ടും അതിന് ചേർന്ന പോർഷൻസ് ആണ് പടെ Maybe this hair is having some kind of damage. Yeah. See this portion. But normal structure will be like this only, same one. analyzing different different samples okay. metal samples uh, tissues uh, that pollen grains uh, those kind of things but here only this is the first time you are studying this must be core facility for all students in university outsiders also allowed they have to pay no yep both university students also paid but little little fees different <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 should decide. <laughs> no, in this, oily hair, dry hair, grey hair, black hair. Can you distinguish that? Grey and black hair. Can you see this? Go to the hair. Structurally. Okay. ഒരാളല്ലേ ഉള്ളൂ മലയാളി അല്ലാത്തതിൽ എന്താ ഒരാളല്ലേ ഉള്ളൂ അല്ല ഇന്ന് നമുക്ക് ഇസെറ്റ് സ്റ്റാക്ക് കൂടെ നോക്കാം ഇസെറ്റ് ത്രീ ഡി കൂടെ നോക്കാം കൺഫോക്കല്ല ത്രീ ഡി കൂടെ നോക്കാം ലേസറിലെ കൺഫോക്കല്ല ത്രീ ഡി കൂടെ നോക്കാം സോ 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 കറണ്ട് ഹാവ് വി ദിസ് ഫോർ ലേസസ് സോ ഫോർ ദിസ് ഐ ഹാവ് ലോഡ് Uh, one the the sample which i loaded the first day i just loaded that one it's a saffron in so it's the green region which which it gets excited so i just selected this one so we have this four lasers this diode argon dpss and he any this 56163 lasers so this argon laser gives this three values 548 to 514 and this uh, dpss laser gives this one this yellow region this 561 and this is the red one and this diode is not switched on right now because it is a uv laser So we have four UV, UV. Uh, diode laser, four not five to four fifty. So less than four not five, we can't do it. But somebody yesterday asked that they have it in three forty three or three something excitation range. So we can't do that. So we first switch on this laser. I know this value, so that's why I just selected the green one. Otherwise, primarily we do one thing because we have this bright field and camera. So first we use the bright field to focus the image on this camera directly. Then we otherwise we can use this objective also i already told that we have 10 20 40 63 and 100 objectives so 10 and 20 are dry one and others are oil immersion mode so we currently can't do it in oil mode because mm is so much dusty so we can't use that one so we are currently using 10 and it is a standard sample you have familiar with this one so so i have car car last day you has know how to take this fluorescence and auto fluorescence all that thing so today we can use that research stack also so we can get a 3d image of that thing so it is um, 
somewhat difficult because it should be get it focused. We should know which where to uh, where that is getting out of focus and where it is getting at the top set. So we are just you know the idea because uh, for this plane because we section it using this confocal planes. So we just but we just coincide of we just incident the laser and we just select the z value. Z value means the z position. So for a section uh, just in papers I just uh, that so that up to 200 nanometers we can do directly for the thickness of the sample we can directly do it in confocal greater than 200 it won't get because it, it will not penetrate to that level we need two photon microscopy greater than 200 nanometers so for up to 200 nanometers microton such anything we can do so up to 200 we can use this confocal directly so we just uh, set a value for z for the bottom position and the top position so we just run the software well, we should be aware because we should try and we should do because we must know that whatever features it comes we got if there is the sample is dusty or something like that it should also be in focus so we should be very careful and very but um, accurate in doing that so we just focus on the downside we can set the actually doing in this software it is very easy because we can just if you know the values we just find the values for the z stack for the bottom level and the top level it is in the micrometer range it gives the values because for the z movement so we must set the two limits so we can then just start the scan and it will go it, it will come we can see this i will show you so it just come like this way scan all the data and just come and we can mix it up and make a 3d image so it's quite a bit easy but we should be because after taking an image only we can finalize that it is out of focus area or focus area because, because by doing single channel only we cannot uh, determine that that's a range so what i'm going to try to do here is i'm going to try to just a lot of people have asked about protocols for staining uh, staining cells and staining tissue. Uh, this is a really good website. Uh, remember I've been talking about that course I took back in 2012, the quantitative fluorescence microscopy. Uh, that was sponsored mostly by the faculty of University of Pittsburgh. This is their website. Uh, they have really nice protocols, really well thought out, a lot of other things on their website that are useful. So we'll take a look at a couple of these protocols rather quickly, hopefully, and then we could uh, uh, head over to the confocal and try to get some hands-on stuff because everybody's been trying to do that. It's just been difficult with the number of people and you know everything else, I guess, in the shorter days. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Let's take a look at cells. Now this is like in general, you know, I'm not saying if you do exactly this it'll work for you, but this is the general idea of how to go about it, okay? Okay, so I'm just going to sit down so I can look at the what's on here too. Okay, so basically you have your cells grown, okay, and you can attach them to a slide with gel vitol, which they have a formula here for how to make that, okay, and it, once you're done with any kind of immunofluorescent uh, staining, you have the slide or you have the plate or whatever, you usually can keep those in the dark in a refrigerator at 4 degrees C. And a lot of times they'll last quite a while. The fluorescent molecules are pretty bright. They last. What we tend to see is if they sit too long, the antibody will tend to dissociate and it might drift away from, from its uh, antigen. Okay, but a lot of times the fluorescence isn't the problem. It's more that. Okay, again, he talks a little bit here about the controls, like we talked about yesterday. Secondary antibody only. Uh, an isotype IgG control. And then sometimes you need to do a control for the autofluorescence, where you don't do any staining to the cell. You just use it, put it on a microscope, look at the fluorescence. Remember we talked about yesterday about how if you do your controls, then you're actually able to interpret your results. Without the controls, you really can't interpret your results. Okay, so they are important. Okay, so you have your plate of cells, let's say. You take off the medium and you wash it three times with PBS. Again, be gentle when you do this. Don't take the pipette and you know put a ton of PBS right in the middle of the plate and wash your cells away okay it's always gentle 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 okay and again like we talked about a little bit the other day don't let it dry out if you're doing a whole bunch of plates don't aspirate 10 plates and then go back and do it maybe do like two plates aspirate 
put the PBS back on. Don't let things dry out. Drying out kills experiments, okay? Kills fluorescence. It just will kill your experiments. So don't let things dry out. Okay, fixation, which we talked a little bit about yesterday. 2% paraformaldehyde. Made up in PBS, so it's isotonic. 15 minutes of room temperature. Cells, for the most part, you can stain or you can fix less because they're so thin. The, the fixative will go inside or around it and fix it rather easily. Whereas tissue, you have to go a little longer. Obviously, thicker piece of tissue, longer, longer, longer yet. We do eyes. Uh, where I'm at, a lot of times we go overnight with those just so it's well fixed. Okay. So I guess the general rule is the bigger the piece of tissue, usually the longer you have to use the fixative for it to, to penetrate into the tissue. Again, these are just general ideas. Okay. Uh, if the sample already has a fluorescent label like mito tracker or lice tracker, then minimize the exposure to light. You don't have to worry about this unless you have one of these things like mito tracker or lyso tracker or something like that. Just keep it out of the light because light will destroy these kind of uh, fluorescent trackers. Okay. And again, like I've said numerous times, check with the company before you do this because if you use a dye and it says you can't fix with paraformaldehyde, you fix with paraformaldehyde, you might just ruin the dye. Okay. Okay. Permeabilized cells with tritinex. Sometimes you don't want to permeabilize the cell. And what I mean by permeabilize the cell is you want to, like Tritinex is a detergent. What do detergents do in general? Detergents do what to cell membranes? They open them up, right. They make holes in it more or less. So detergents allow antibodies in or whatever you're trying to, to get inside the cell, okay? So if you don't want that to happen, like if you want to try to stay out on the membrane and stain something on the extra cellular part of the membrane, you don't want your antibody going in, don't use Tritinex, okay? Tritinex is a detergent made to permeabilize. Okay, different detergent permeabilization protocols may be necessary depending on your system, okay? Uh, in general, after you do most steps, you're gonna to want to keep washing with PVS. Again, keep things wet, okay? Okay, now they're using BSA here for a block, five times. BSA is just bovine serum albumin. Not a bad idea. Sometimes people do it, sometimes don't. It's just depends. Uh, like we said, though, a lot of times what we'll do for blocking is we'll do serums instead. Remember we talked about if you're doing a secondary antibody, you want to use the serum from that host antibody, right? Okay, now they recommend 20% here. Most of the labs I work with, we work a lot lower than that, 10 and lower, but I've heard of 20. I mean, it's the kind of thing you just have to try it and see, but, but you can't, you know, probably can't go wrong with this either. Okay, likewise, if your secondary is made in donkey, use 20% donkey serum. So the host, the secondary host is what you want to use for a block. Okay, primary antibody, it talks about it a little bit. Uh, The one thing about primary antibodies and secondary antibodies I recommend, when you go to work with them, vortex that sample. Vortex that antibody tube. Because sometimes you have like things in solution, that are like precipitates and stuff that are just floating around in a solution. So if you vortex it and then you spin it down real hard, just in an Eppendorf tube, just in a little Eppendorf spinner, uh, you know, when there's little micro centrifuge, full blast for you know, four or five minutes, you can get that particle precipitate to, to go to the bottom and then just use the super name to, to work with, okay? Because what we'll see sometimes is somebody will do real nice staining and then secondary precipitates and you'll see just spots all over, like fluorescent spots all over the tissue. So if you vortex your antibody samples and you spin them down, a lot of times that tends to avoid that. Same thing with the primary, like he says here, okay? Primary antibodies can be added at the same time, but the host must be from two different species. So what this means is you can do a, an anti, like you can do a, say a mouse monoclonal and a rabbit anticlonal, polyclonal at the same time, because your secondaries then are from different species. If you're doing it, if you're stuck with the situation where you're doing, you know, two rabbit polyclonals or, or two mouse monoclonals or something like that, then you have to look a little farther into other kind of protocols. I just don't have time to go into all the blocking steps and such, but that will be a problem because think about it. If you have two mouse primaries, 
you throw in a secondary red and a secondary green, it's going to stick to both of them. I can't differentiate which one's which, okay? There is ways around that. Like we talked yesterday a little bit about mouse on mouse. So what I would do is do a Google search. If that's the situation like mouse on mouse or primary antibodies from the same host and you can find information how to deal with the situation like that. Again, after you stain. So what do they recommend? Okay, my best luck with primary antibody staining, I usually have the best luck going overnight at four degrees. Usually it's a little bit cleaner. That's just my personal preference. I mean, I've done it a lot of times at room temperature, like an hour or two hours, but but a lot of times, you know, depending on the day, if it's the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with keeping it overnight. And the whole idea again is to keep it wet. So like it says here, if longer incubation times are necessary, place a wet, wet a piece of wet paper towel in your slide box. So again, you want to keep everything wet. You don't want things to dry out. So you know, put a wet piece of paper towel down. Put your slide on top of it if you're going to let it go overnight, so it doesn't dry out. Okay. Okay. Secondary antibody made up in the uh, the uh, blocking buffer. Okay. Spin it down like we talked about. Vortex and spin down to get rid of particles. Avoid using the solution from the bottom of the vial because again, you can have those uh, precipitates. Wash it five times. Now, here's an example where they use Hox stain. Hox stain's sort of like DAPI, but it's more for live cells, usually, but it works just like DAPI. You just make up the Hox, put it on your cells, and you'll get that nice blue nucleus, okay? Okay, again, another wash step. Once the cells are fixed, going up a ways, they're much more durable, okay? You still want to be gentle, but they're more durable because remember fixation is to hold everything together like glued it to maintain the morphology so there's it's definitely stickier and and they're 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 tougher because they're all sort of stuck together okay okay so once you are done you have your cells okay if using cover slip bottom chamber sides like we talked about these mat tech dishes you don't need to put a mounting media on top of that. So if you have your cells in a dish and the staining's already been done, you don't have to cover it with like a mounting media. Okay, mounting media is more for cells on a cover slip. But what you would have to do though is you still want your cells in PBS at 4 degrees C because you don't want them to dry out. Okay, again, drying out kills fluorescence, kills, it just kills everything. Don't let it dry out. Okay, so it gives you a couple recipes here, how to make that. And about the only other thing I can add here is like, let's say you have your soles on a slide, you need to put a cover slip on it, right? So you can make up this gel Vital, or you could use Vecta Shield like we've talked about, that's a mounting media that protects the fluorescence. Or you could use something called Prolong Go Gold that protects the fluorescence. Some of these commercially available ones like Vecta Shield, you can actually buy with DAPI in it. So instead of doing a separate stain like hawk the dappy's already in the mounting media you can just put it on and stain but the trick with putting cover slips on slides is you want to put it down you want to put a you know a couple drops and you want to be gentle and you want to put the cover slip down like this because what you don't want to do is you don't want to make a lot of bubbles because if you make a lot of bubbles then you go to image it and bubbles are refracting light all over the place okay so the whole and you know like when you take a drop of mounting media. Maybe don't take that first drop because chances are that first drop has a lot of bubbles in it because of the air. So maybe blot that first drop aside, and take that second drop, not as, many, not as much air, not as many bubbles. You want to try to avoid bubbles, okay. Okay, so that's, that's basically a general, I'd say, protocol, you know, some variations to it, but that's basically a really good general protocol to stain cells. A couple things you might see, I've done these in the past. Instead of using paraformaldehyde, I've used this cold methanol or acetone before. Uh, it's quick, it's cold, but, but again, if you do something like this, you cannot do this on plastic because acetone's an organic, it'll eat your plastic, okay? But in general, if you follow something like this more or less, for most antibodies, most stains, this will work, okay? So does anybody have any questions about that? I mean, it's sort of a general, generic kind of protocol, but, but it, it, I mean, you might have to vary it a little, but that's 
pretty basic, pretty common protocol. Any questions? No, no. Okay, so let's go back one and we'll move on to tissues real quick. And like I said, there's other protocols here. This is the, uh, the instructions for making the gel with tall. But let's, let's go here to tissue immunofluorescence, okay? Okay. Okay, so in their hands, for best results, samples should be in paraphernalia fixed first and frozen using like two methyl butane cool with liquid nitrogen. Uh, what we used to do pretty much like this, we would we'd pretty much do something like this because you want to freeze these samples. Now what they're talking about here is you could keep these samples frozen at minus 80. Don't freeze at minus 20 if you can avoid it. Freeze at minus 80, okay? Uh, if you take the sample out, you're going to the cryostat or something, keep it on dry ice because you want to keep it cold. Don't let it thaw. Thawing will affect the section ability, tissue quality, and staining. Okay. Again, once you make the sections, now we're talking about cryostat here. We're talking about that cold sectioning. Okay. The, the cryostat itself will be cold. Everything will be cold. So you want to keep everything cold. Okay, again, same idea, even though it's tissue, you have the same idea of controls, okay? Tissue tends to impart more autofluorescence. I work with retina. Retina is pretty bad. It autofluoresces quite a bit. But in general, tissue will autofluoresce more than cells. So you definitely want to do this autofluorescent uh, control, I would think, for tissue, okay? Okay. This right here, a lot of people try to cut the cryostat sections real thick. I'm not sure why, but usually this is what we do too. The histologist I work with gets really mad when somebody wants thicker. Uh, six, six microns or so seems to work really, really good. You put them on slides, and I don't know if you've ever done cryostat, but when you cut the section, it's cold, it's icy. You basically just hold the slide up next to it, and it'll jump onto the slide. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you can coat slides so the tissue will stick, but what we used is we used the same thing they use here. We use Superfrost Plus. So what it is is these slides actually have a charge on them, and what it'll do is the tissue will tend to stick to it. Okay, because nothing more frustrating than you, you put it on, you went through all this work, you got it on a slide, you got to do some staining and it falls off the slide. Okay, so you want to make sure it sticks. And like we said, you might have to put gelatin, but we really, a lot at the place I work, we use these Superfrost Plus stain slats because they have a little bit of a charge and they'll hold your tissue to it. Okay. Again, you can keep the slats for a long time at minus 20 until you're ready to use them. Okay, so when you start doing your staining, again, it all comes back to wet. You can rehydrate your tissue sections with PBS. And just a word aside, I mean, I don't know how you make your PBS or whatever, but if your PBS is made wrong, then you're not isotonic, it's a nightmare. It will cause problem after problem after problem. Uh, I had a lab for a long time, I couldn't figure out what was going on and what it was, the PBS was way off and the cells were just like shrinking up, okay? Because you remember that was probably in general biology osmosis, you know, water will follow the salt, so if the isotonicity's wrong, it'll shrink or swell. So it's real important to make sure that's isotonic. Okay, depending on your Protein or cell type detergent permeabilization, again, basically the same thing we talked about with cells, permeabilize or not permeabilize. Again, basically the same idea, blocking with this or blocking with serum from the species in which your secondary antibodies are made. Okay, so, yes? No. No, 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 you want to use phosphate buffer the same way because water would have a, a no salt in it so you're, it, would, it would tend to distort your cells or your tissue. So you don't want to use water for washing, you want to use saline, that little bit of salt. So just look up phosphate buffer saline, you probably make it up, it's just salt and a little bit of buffer. But that's important because, because you want to maintain that, that isotonicity. 
because I remember you, somewhere along biology you probably studied osmosis, and if it's not of the same, then it'll tend water to migrate in or water to migrate out and hurt the cells. So yeah, you definitely don't want to use just water. You want to stay with uh, PBS. Okay. Okay. Again, the idea of the secondary from the host. Again, wash. Again, primary. Same kind of deal. I mean, really not not much different here than with cells. Same idea, washing. Really nothing different here because except for the initial preparation of the tissue, it's not different than, you know, what you do with cells. The, the staining steps are basically the same from here on out. Okay, uh, I guess the big difference is mounting it on a slide. Like we said, you can use charged slides or whatever. Uh, again, they talk about sometimes you do tissue in methanol or acetone. This again would be one of those where you'd look in the protocol for that particular antibody or something, you might have to use a different fixative. Ask the company, look in the literature, see what they did. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's see what else they got here. Okay, that's pretty much about it. And then again, tissues you'd have on a slide, so this would be where you'd mount, use your mounting media and try not to make bubbles. Okay. Any other questions? Questions about any of this? Like I said, this is a nice website. And these are basic protocols. I mean, variations you might have to do to make your stuff work. But in general, these are nice uh, protocols. They got an H&E staining protocol here, like we talked about for like pathology. And they've also got what they call this Gelvitol, which is their idea of a mounting media. Okay, so you can make it yourself or you could buy like I said, Vecta Shield or Prolong Gold or, or some type of mounting media like that. Okay. So, any questions about staining? And you see, the protocols are fairly repetitive. Even though it's tissue, even though it's cells, there's not a whole lot of difference. Fix, you know, block, stain, wash, keep everything wet. Those are basically the uh, basically the ideas. Okay, so I guess what we're gonna do now, we're gonna try to go over to Confocal and hopefully I could jump on there, hopefully I could get, I'm, I'm gonna try to get some people on there because I know you've been wanting to do hands-on, it's just been difficult with the number of people and uh, me being by myself that I can't, I can't be over here doing Metamorph and I can't be over there doing the Confocal, unless we clone me, but I don't think that's quite possible yet. So, so uh, let's head on over to the Confocal and we'll try to, uh, do some work with that and try to get some of you on there. Like, I'd like to at least everybody try to take a stack or something on there and take some images, okay? So let's head over there and uh, we'll see how it goes. To examine, to try to find the cells unstained, but the problem is, is the samples, this is a plastic dish, right? Yeah, so plastic dish, again, you can't use DIC, so we're limited in that respect. Okay. But again, I just, I can't seem to find the cells. So I think what we're going to do, we're just going to move on for sake of time because I'm just not finding them. So keep them here. We'll look at them after 5 o'clock, okay? I just can't find anything. Just like yesterday, same problem, okay? I mean, I wish I could, but I can't. So let's put up the slide holder. This just pops out, right? Okay, everybody's got different kind of holders under a microscope. I'm not familiar with this one. But here, hold on to this. And let's try taking a look after 5. Now, you, now it's live. Or good. But, okay, so they'll be fine. Just keep them in the dark for the next little bit. We'll take a look after five. So go ahead, Sham, you put up the slide holder. And then what we'll try to do is we'll try to find some. Polymer. Yeah, we'll try to do the polymer, exactly. And then we'll see if we can do some stacks, and then we'll let them sit down, look at it, and just let them shoot some stacks. That'll be the plan. So we get it to work once, then we'll get it to work 51 times. Okay. okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put up, I brought a slide from America, I hope it's still in here, of, oh, that is a fluorescent correction slide. So what I use this kind of slide for is if I think I've got an unevenness in my camera, then what I do is I put up a slide like this, 
I'll take a picture and I'm able to look at the gray values. Remember we talked about gray values? I want to make sure my gray values fall within a certain range to tell me that my fluorescent field is even and flat. That's what I use that for. Okay, but let's try this here with the, uh, actually with the pollen grain slide. Okay. 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 Huh? Oh, we could. Yeah, yeah, we could. We could. So here's a little different. My mind, it just sort of catches on the edge. He's got the newer scope. I've got this same scope, but this is the next generation beyond mine. So this one's a lot newer than mine. Okay, so let's go back to transmitted light. And let's just see if we can see the pollen grains. And then we will... Or actually, I don't know if it's pollen grains. I think it's marine diatoms, but nonetheless. Okay, perfect. And let's go up to 20. So on this one, mm -hmm. yeah. See, it's weird. I've got the exact same scope, but the buttons are all in a different place. Or like I said, this is the next generation, so everything's changed a little bit. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at the synchron focal. So what he's doing here, okay, Basically, he's got different lasers to pick from. He's got 458, 488, 514, 561, 633. So what it is, this would be like a DAPI excitation of 458. The 488, remember I told you, is the most common, the green. So this would be his excitation wavelengths, okay? And he's limited by his lasers. He can't really vary that. But the nice thing about this kind of confocal, he can vary his emission collection wavelengths. So what he's gonna set up here, you're just going with the regular green. I'm gonna try this green. So what we'll do is we'll try the, I haven't looked at these in a long time, I sort of forget. But yeah, I just set up a green. And take a look, see how it looks with the mm -hmm. confocal. Uh, go like, yeah, like Five down around in here. Yeah, somewhere in there and try the 48. Let's see what we got. Do you red also? Hmm? Can you do red at the same time? Yeah. Red? Red, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do, we're also gonna do red. I wanna use the 561 laser and then we wanna collect like out maybe around yeah, 600 or something. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so why doesn't somebody sit down here? Who wants to go first? Go ahead, sit. Get this out of your way. Whoops. So go ahead, grab a seat. Now the one thing about when you're on a microscope, you want to be comfortable. We don't have time to keep adjusting the chair, but grab a seat. Okay, take a look in here. Is it too bright for your eyes? Is it too bright? Or you can see it just fine. Okay, so pick, pick something. This is, this is your X and Y. So move it around and find something you like, okay? This is X and Y, this is focus. Okay, so try to find one that looks interesting. Okay? These are marine diatoms. Did you find an interesting one? Okay, so yeah. What is this? These are diatomes. Does anybody know what diatomes are? Diatomes? Diatomes? Anybody know what diatomes are? Plankton. Plankton, right? Okay, so let's send it over to the confocal and let's take a picture of what she's been looking at here. Now, the nice thing about this, it's a good demonstration because the diatomes tend to auto fluoresce. So we're not really using a fluorescent dye, but it's nice because it can. Perfect. Okay. 
Now the problem is different ones fluoresce differently. So you're running the scan right now? Yeah, a live image Okay. Then focus it. So good. Somebody want to try to focus it, see if we can get a better image? Come on over and just focus it. Look at the screen. See if we can get it a little bit better. So this is focus. You don't have to look with your eyes anymore. Because once you start using the laser through the confocal, your eyes are out of the ball game. Because actually what it has, it has a safety mechanism in here that once the laser starts, it will not go to the eyes. So what she's doing here, she's moving up and down in Z, the, the confocal scanning. Okay, see how like the focus is changing where she's at? So like I said, though, once the laser start, this has a safety mechanism so the laser can't go to your eye and hit you in the eye because it's not good for you, right? I mean, don't want a laser in the eye. Okay, so she's got something here. So can we take a Z start at the, like have her pick a top and then... Z-start. Yeah. Okay. The laser's fine, no? The laser's internal laser. Turn it up just a little bit. It won't hurt anything on these. You can go up a little higher. Okay. So what he's doing here, even though it's a red laser, we're using pseudo color blue. And then green, we're using pseudo color green. Okay, so what we're going to do is I want you to go up. We're going to try to image this one. So I want you to come, and I hope it's like mine. I want you to spin this a little bit in the counterclockwise direction. Okay, and then I want you to pick the top when you think it's the top. Okay, let's call that the top. See how it sort of went out of focus? So he's going to, so stop. He's going to pick the top. Remember we talked about making a Z stack, right? So a little bit out of focus, that would be your top. And now go the other direction. Now see what I said about the speed. See how the speed, you can see the raster coming down. It's not the fastest thing in the world. Okay, so go down a little more. Keep going, keep going. Okay, perfect, call that bottom. So does it tell us how many Z steps we have? No, you can increase no. 27. That's good. So basically what it says is our Z size is 17 microns. So we're gonna go 17 microns and we're gonna take basically a step 17, so be a 27, so about every half micron, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, try it, let's run it. Let's see what we get. You're good. So now, again, always on the microscope. Find the specimen first with your eyes. Step A. Focus what you want, right? Find the specimen, focus what you want. And now since it's confocal, we set up our times, we picked our top, we picked our bottom, we're running a, run a stack. So it's running? Uh, no, not right yet, but it's running right now. Yeah, go ahead, start it. Okay, so what it's doing, it's taking its way, and where's it show Z? Does it show where the Z reads out? Each of the yeah, 27 steps, it had reached 9. Oh, okay, so it's going down. Yeah. So see, here's Z, and as you can see, the focus is changing. Because remember, the whole idea of confocal is to take that thin optical plane, right? You take that thin optical plane. So what we're watching here is we're watching it work its way through the diatome. Now, can you look at it like in 3D? Can you do like a 3D yeah, projection? Yeah. Okay, okay. See? was sort of in focus, now it's out of focus. Some of the other ones are in focus, out of focus. Okay, so it ran the stack. Now what he's doing, he's doing a 3D projection. Okay, remember we talked about 3D? So now he's looking at it in 3D. Now this is nice too, because here he's looking at it, I think you're looking at separate channels, right? Okay, so he's got your green channel, and then you can move this, I think, and go through the different planes, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So does that all sort of make sense, what we did? It, it tries to highlight what we, what we talked about in class. Okay, we're going to try something else, but let me have somebody else sit down. Somebody else sit down. I want you to find a different one. So let's send the light back to the eyes for you. Somebody else grab a seat. I'm trying to do some hands-on. I'm trying to speed it through, okay? I would do anything to have all of you in my lab right now, but it, it's 26 hours away, so it's not really applicable. Okay, so we're going to go back to, so stop live. I, I think you have it stopped now anyway, yeah, right? Okay. So hit this button here, BF. Okay. 
you got to hear a click and then the shutter's on. So look through here. Do you see anything? Is it too bright? Okay, so if it's too bright, turn this back towards you. Turn this knob right here. This one. Take a look through there. This one? Yeah. Turn it back towards you, I think. It makes the light less, right? The light's not so bright. Do you see anything? What do you see? Anything? Do you see some diatomes in there? Different colors? You do? Okay. So use this. This is X and Y. Focus around. Find something you think looks pretty. And then this is the focus. And once you find something you think looks pretty, put it in the middle. Try to get it in the middle as best you can. Focus it. And then we're going to show a little bit different something with the car focal. So what we'll do this time, we'll do the same thing. You do a stack, mm -hmm. and then, then what we'll do is we'll, we'll pick it, and then what we'll do is turn confocal again. Okay? Same. Pretty close to the same. Let's just move over just a little. Let's try something a little different. Oh, I'm See, this is so weird because on mine, this button's up and down, and this one. Uh, yeah, this is X Y. Yeah, pick something. It's so weird though because you know I've been doing it 11 years, and on mine, this is like X, and this one's Y. And it's opposite here, so it sort of throws me for a little bit of a loop. Okay, let's try to get this one in the middle. See if we get this one in the middle or closer to the middle. Right, that's good, you're moving it down. Okay, that's pretty good. So, what you wanna do is you wanna go counterclockwise a little bit, keep watching it, and we wanna watch where this starts to get blurry. Okay, so we're gonna pick the bottom of our Z stack. Is that the way yours works? Like you turn it this way, it goes. Okay. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And then call that, whoop, too far, too far. I mean, you could do the Z stack on that, but it would be a little bit too deep. Okay, let's call that top right there, that's fine. Okay, call that your one Z point. Okay, and then go the other way. Go clockwise. Okay, so what we're doing is we're picking our range, right? And then what are we gonna call those planes we take? A Z stack, right? Like a deck of cards. And then when he did the 3D thing, what do we call that? It's got a name. Two names. You can either call it something that starts with a P. R, yes, a projection, right? That's a 3D projection, good. Or sometimes what we'll call that is we'll call that a rendering. So you pick the other, you pick the other bottom or whatever? Yeah, how many steps do we get? Okay, so go ahead, run the stack. So what he's gonna do here, he's gonna run the stack again like last time, okay? So it's gonna take our stack again. Okay, and it looks pretty good. But what we're gonna do, so what can I do, we talked about it yesterday, to make the confocal image better? What can we do? Average. Average. And you remember what averaging is? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do frame average. So what it will do is it'll take a picture of that frame. It'll take a picture of that frame again. It'll take a picture of that frame a third time, picture fourth time. Now it's gonna take longer, but the pixels that are the same in every frame, it's gonna keep, whereas the pixels that go into the other one that, uh, that only appear in one of the frames will get thrown out. Because that would be noise, probably. Okay, so look at the quality of this as it goes. Is it done? Yeah. Okay, so go back to it. Go back to where we were. Okay, so look at the quality, right? Now let's see if averaging helps. Okay, so let's run the exact same stack but let's run a frame average and run the frame average of four. Or, no, not accu, but average. 
like this one here. Yeah. 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 Run that at four. Okay. I'm blocking you. Okay, so run the same thing. Run speed, it again. You want to speed or format anything? Uh, no, that's fine. That will take some time. It'll take a little bit of time. But take a look at this quality. Okay, now let's see if the frame average helps. Now on this coin pickle, I'm not sure if it does it on the fly or does it afterwards. Yeah, pass the one. Then the three frames. Okay. But see how it's doing that first one, second one, third one? I think it's averaging on the yeah. fly. But see how the quality is getting better? How you're getting a crisper image? Because what it's doing is it's getting rid of the noise. We could also go a little higher with the average. But, but the trick to using an instrument like this really is averaging. Because it'll take a little longer, but you get rid of the noise. Okay, and the whole idea is to get nice signal, low noise, okay? Okay, so let's have somebody else, yeah, nice 3D projection, looks good. Okay, let's have somebody else jump up here. Who, want, who else wants to jump up here? Somebody, somebody, somebody? Okay, I want you to go to 10X. Okay, so the different objective came in. What we're going to do is we're going to put a slide up here. Different slide. Okay, now see that? That's what you're going to be looking for. Okay. We're going to put this slide on now. Okay. We're going to put this down. And now what you're going to do is you're going to move this over. We're going to send the light to your eyes. So hit uh, this one. Push that one. Okay, hit BF for bright field. Okay, and then we're going to turn the light on, so hit the shutter. Okay, and we're going to move over a little bit. And right about there. And then you look with your eyes. Now, if you're going to do this for hours, like I do all the time, these things actually, these things actually usually adjust up and down. This one doesn't, but they do go closer, okay? And I do mine for hours and hours. I mean, sometimes I'm in there six, seven hours a day. It's, but you want to be comfortable, okay? So adjust your chair, all that, because you don't want to, you know, walk out of, and be stiff as a board. So do you see something? Yeah. Okay. What's it look like? A bunch of circles. Just, uh, section. Yeah. Okay. So you found something. Okay. So let's send it back over to Confocal. Now, what colors do you usually use for this? Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do here, she found something different. And again, look at the idea of the confocal here. It's catching this plane here a lot better, but not so much here, okay? Because remember, it's a, it's a thinner section. Okay, so let's try. So what I want you to do is focus up and down. Okay, and we'll turn the averaging back off. We'll turn it off this time. Okay. All right. So you let me know when you're running live. You are. Yeah. So focus down counterclockwise. Go that way. Right. Yeah. Start going that way. Like against the clock. Okay. See the difference in the planes? Okay. She's going against the clock here. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. And we'll call that stop. We'll call that bottom. Okay, and then go the other way and we'll do top. Now see what it is basically, we're looking at different samples, but, but it's a repetition. Once you get the hang of it, once you understand how to work it, it's basically the same thing over and over and over, right? I mean, yeah, you might adjust your lasers a little because your specimen might be a little you know, dimmer or brighter or whatever, but the idea is the same. Find a specimen, focus it, find the top, find the bottom, Set up your Z stack and then just go. Okay. Okay. Now he's just moving over, so it's a little more in the middle. In plastic, I had to use just this. This is the fluorescent light. I could not use the lasers because the lasers it'll just scatter the light all over. This will work for plastic, but as I think you've seen from the days I've been talking, glass. 
glass, glass, glass if you can because you'll always get a better image through glass. Okay. Okay, this is con valeria. It's a plant. Uh, it actually grows in my yard. I don't know if it grows here. I think it's a cold weather one. But it, at home, we call it lily of the valley. It's a real pretty little, like right now it's dormant in my house because it's cold. But supposedly it will, when spring comes in, it's one of the first flowers to bloom. Why we use it all the time in this, I have no idea. Okay, so what is he doing now? He's doing a 3D projection or a 3D rendering, right? And you think, oh, this might be co-localized. And you look at it in 3D here, you see where the green and the blue are overlapping, and yeah, they're, they're probably in the same place, okay. I mean, again, this is sort of a generic sample that works. This is something I would use in sales, because it always works, it always fluoresces. Okay, it looks pretty good. Okay, so let's have somebody try to die at home who wants to sit down and give it a shot. Anybody, anybody, sit, whoever, sit down, perfect. Things fighting each other and things eating each other. And it's pretty interesting. See, nice thing about this one, it tells you how long you got left. Like about three seconds, two seconds, one second. Okay, so show us how long that is. How long is that thing? See, this software has a built in based on the objective. Right? So that's 209, what is it? Microns, right? And how wide is it? Now, you might have some of the image analysis software in this particular software, but I don't know. So, but a lot of times what I get is I'll get people go take pictures on the confocal, then they'll come over and see me, and then we'll open it up in Metamorph and work on it, okay? So, and Metamorph can handle images coming in from a variety of different instruments. That's why I like it, because it can handle different softwares coming into it, okay? And I just like it because I'm familiar with it. So does that all make sense? how that worked and let's just take a look at the 3d of it see nice and clean and crisp and the averaging is really the trick though okay 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 somebody else want to try one somebody else, somebody else, somebody else. jump 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 everybody's jumping okay i have a problem with women that wear mascara <laughs> just because Usually what happens is it ends up all over the eyepieces, okay? So if you do wear mascara, that's fine. But when you're done, usually what you want to do is you want to wipe out the eyepieces. Because I'll walk up sometimes, and we have a lot of women where I work that wear mascara, and there's just black all over the eyepieces, okay? <laughs> Let's take like three, four minutes. Oh, it's done. Done. Okay. So again, he has the ability to measure. He has the ability to look at his one channel, second channel, third channel. And remember, this is red, but we made it blue. Yeah, pseudo color, it's all fake. We can make the green blue, we can make the, you know, whatever looks good. And somebody was asking me the other day, like if you used Alexa 488 and you put in a publication and, and you didn't do it as green, yeah, it's probably good to write in a figure legend pseudo color red for clarity or something like that. Because sometimes you want certain colors to go together. Maybe not the colors people would think of, but it's a good thing. Okay, and then again, he could measure, he could do different things with it. Okay. Okay, we probably got time for one more out of this group. Somebody else wants to sit down and try to do one? So this one we're gonna try, this one we're just gonna need the red laser probably. We're not gonna need green. Yeah, because what I'm doing is I'm looking at H and E slide of an eye. Red only? Yeah, I think red only. But the the 561 red. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Okay. The digital you need red only. This one. Yeah, just that. Only. That's all we need. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look at this live on the Confogel. This is an eye I brought with me that I think was stained with H and E. And yeah, okay, it's not a fluorescent stain. But usually Uh, go down more in here, like, yeah, down in here more. Okay, take a look, see if we got something. Now, do you see the eye in there? Yeah. Okay, you can't look now because the laser's going. 
Okay, stop it so one sec. That's very good to see though. Maybe, let's take a look. So let me take a look with my eyes yes. real quick. No, you're good, you're good, you stay there. Believe me, I'm used to look through a microscope at every angle you can imagine. Yeah, oh, this is an H and A. That might be the problem. That's right. Oh, it'll fluoresce though. Okay, so. But again, excitation is limited by the laser line. You can't, you know, for some reason, I had people yesterday ask me about, can we excite at 350? And it's like, no, you can't. And to tell you the truth, top of my head, I'm not sure what kind of scope you'd use to do that. Because biology, we don't go down that far usually because that's just damaging. Because yeah. you're down in the UV, you're really damaging. It's not a biology kind of thing. And the other thing is, if you start seeing, now this is my personal experience, if you're trying to come up with two or three colors, I mean, there's nothing wrong with using the blue for DAPI, okay? But I try to avoid blue fluorochromes. They just, in general, aren't as good. So I try to stay with my greens and my reds. The blue ones just aren't as good. Although I've seen a new one came out, just came to my lab in the last few weeks called Brilliant Violet 421. It's a flow dye, but it seems to work pretty good for the microscope. But try to avoid the blues if you can. Usually we hold the blues for Dappy and that Hawksh dye. And then we use the reds and the greens for more experiments. No, you try to, yeah, you always try to stay out of that UV if you can because the energy is just, just pounding it. Okay, somebody else want to give it a shot? Try something? I think we're going to go back to the diatome because that looks pretty. If I haven't lost it yet. You got your slide back, right? Okay, good, good, good. Good. Okay, so I'm gonna put the diatone one back up for you. Huh? Okay. Okay, so the stuff's gonna be in this circle here, okay? So you're gonna hit bright field BF. And the shutter, I think, go ahead, push it. I'm not sure if it's on or not. I gotta put this down. Like on a scope like mine too, this is the white light up here. Like on my scope, I don't have a laser on my main one. So I can just keep this out of the way if I'm just doing fluorescence. Fluorescence is totally like, I'm not talking about confocal fluorescence, I'm talking about wide field fluorescence. This is a fluorescent light box right here. Fluorescence is all underneath. Your cubes and such are in here, so you wouldn't even need this. This is your white light. This is your transmitted light. This is your DIC, this is your phase, all that, okay? Okay, take a, hit this button here, and let me know if you see anything. You see anything? Okay, so here's, here's X and Y and focus, so find us something pretty and put it in the middle. Okay. But does everybody get the idea what this is? So what kind of scope is this? Is this upright or inverted? Inverted, inverted right. And then this does what? Laser right, no, this isn't your laser source. This is actually your, uh, this is just your fluorescent light. This, this is your fluorescent light box. The rule we have at home when you use a fluorescent light box like this is if you turn it on right now, you wanna leave it on at least a half hour. You don't want to turn it on and then turn it right off because that'll hurt the bulb. These bulbs are about $500 a bulb at home. So anytime you turn on fluorescent light, you want to leave it on at least a half hour before you turn it off. And then like, say you turned it off, like it's been on all day, you turned it off and you go, oh, I got to take one more picture I forgot. You got to wait like 20, 25 minutes, let it cool down before you turn it back on because that'll hurt the bulb, okay? Worst thing you can do with lights, any light, is turn it on and turn it off. That's the worst thing you can do. So mine in the morning, what I do is I come in, turn it on, it stays on all day until I leave. So we got something, you're the master, we'll let you take a picture. We have a grant, and most of our money comes from a grant, but the government shorted us. Like we asked for so much, we only got so much. So we're, only, we're not allowed to make a profit, but we can charge. Anything? 
average, but we're going to try it. Okay, so we're going to do blue, red, green, and so we're going to do, what was the red? What color? The red was called what? Alexa 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 Floor 488. You know? 568. Okay. Okay, so let's run Dappy. So we'll run a 458. Oh, so this is just green and red. Oh. And Dappy? Dapp uh, Dappy, I'm sorry. Okay, so we'll run Dappy. So it'll be a 458 with the... I mean, we could try it. Okay, and then let's try... And would you say green is what? I did not get what. The green... FITC. FITC, okay. So turn this up just a little bit, the green. So, yeah, maybe like 2 or 3%. And then, so we use this, yeah, turn that off, turn that off, turn the 458. So turn the green up a little bit, the 488. And then what collector are you using? Are you using this one right here? So yeah, center this like around 512. Okay, can you make it narrower? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But bring it up around, like in there. Okay, and then, Maybe over a little bit that way. Yeah, okay. Okay. Let's see where I'm in trouble with the bubbles. Like it's bouncing all over the place a little bit. Uh, okay, can you turn the laser down a little bit more? Yeah. See, PE, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm not sure what the, what the spectrum is. I'm not sure what the spectrum is. Do you know? For the FICO erythrin? I don't know it. Any idea? See if, like, on your lookup table. Yeah. Yeah. Take a look at your lookup table. See if you have something called P. Like, go all the way down P. No, not P. because if we look at. Let me show you what I mean. Let me have the eyes back again. I can set the back. Okay. Okay. So take a look at the green. Go ahead, grab a seat. Okay. See the pattern? You see what it looks like, right? Okay. Okay, now watch. Keep looking, keep looking. See how it looks the same? Does it look pretty much the same? Uh, pretty close? But I can differentiate. So. But it's close, right? Yes. Right. Because the problem is your both your excitations are like, they're on top of each other. Yeah. yeah. That's all right. That's why you're here, to learn these things, OK? OK. Do you have that CD? Yeah. OK. Oh, you have it with you? Oh. Okay. Let me grab it off here. But it's working for you, right? Okay, okay. Your excitations are so close. When you excite the Fitzy, you're going to excite the other, too. And they're both going to sort of bleed into each other. I mean, it might not be 100% bleed, but it's going to be hard to tell, hey, is that really Fitzy we're looking at, or is that really PE we're looking at? It's going to be hard to tell the two apart because they're so close. That's why I was saying, see, it would be nice if you had like a 488 and then like a 647. They'd be really far apart, and then you wouldn't have this problem. So the option is to get another, another die, right? Probably. Another yeah, these two just don't work. Because see, see how, even though we're trying, but see how the, I mean, the bubbles interfere, but see how the pattern, the pattern's the same? Because you can't spectrally pull the two apart because they're both exciting at the same time. And they're close enough that they're just they're just bleeding into each other. And like I was showing her, you working you work with her? Uh, okay. Yeah. So can I change focus area? Yeah, Is sure. There any okay. Area? All right, so let her pick a different focus. Or you can move it over, yeah. 
Does it make sense what's going on there, what I'm telling you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. They're too close. Because see, if you look, the shape is the same. You can't tell one from the other, really. It's eating the sandwich. I see it. It's getting that Probably. Kind of yeah. I can't take a single cell's image, single cell image without bubble. Let's, so take a look. Okay, let's go back to your eyes. Let her go back to the eyes. It's hard because you got bubbles everywhere. Go ahead, take a seat. See if you can find something. Shutter. You see it? How about that? You see something? Yes. Do you see anything? Okay. Yes. So now, how about now? Yeah. Okay. So, X, Y, and focus. You know, I need a picture of this. People are going to be asking me questions about this when I go home, and I'll figure out what we got. Okay. And what should be the minimum dis uh, difference between the nanometers to avoid such kind of uh, overlapping? As far as you can get. Okay. I mean, it, it, ideally, you want to go as far as you can go. Ideally. Okay. But you at least want. I mean, what do you have? What do you own? Now it is something 495 and 498, right? Right, they're... Two dice. Right. So what should be the minimum difference between... There is no them? minimum. You, remember I showed you that one thing with the, the in vitro, like from a vitrogen? Who's on the internet? You on the internet with your phone? 